Welcome to the 29th episode of Let's Talk About Electric Vehicles. My name is Teresa and I am here with my co-host Theo. Hello. Hello Theo. And um, together we are talking about electric vehicles on this podcast. And um, actually we want to try something new today. Let's see how it goes. Instead of having like a scripted episode, we both have done our research about the topic and we just try to have a conversation about it and let's see how it goes. How do you feel? Uh, you know, nervous, but let's do this. <laughs> okay, so would you like to tell us what topic we're going to talk about today, if it's not obvious from the title yet? <laughs> yes, for everyone who, who didn't read the, the title and just was listening to the latest episode because you know it's going to be good, uh, today we're going to talk about <laughs> Uh, electric car racing um, and there yeah, and also uh, ring ding ding bing 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 what, what was that that was the sound of a of a formula one car oh so actually i downloaded um, some sound of of formula one cars and the formula e cars oh nice yeah but so you don't but you can still keep on doing your ring ding ding thing okay good thank you <laughs> you feel comfortable doing it <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about about electric car racing and um, and some of the different or different types of racing. Um, and I think uh, the ones we we're landed on are we're gonna talk about the uh, kind of track racing um, versus and then also drag racing. Um, yeah, but there there are various different types of electric racing. Um, one thing that we're not going to talk about today is solar racing because it doesn't really fit in this um, in, in this kind of scope. Solar racing, I feel like, is more about the technology. It's different research groups or different groups of students that um, race um, their um, car, their solar car that they have created themselves. And whoever gets further or is faster or whatever wins. But it's not like per se about the person who who drives the race it's more about the technology yeah so um as you said we're gonna talk about racing on track like electric go-karts um, or formula e but also about drag racing and um you earlier told me that you also did some research about hill climbing yeah which is which is pretty interesting i guess it's kind of like a, a variation on track racing um, yeah but but uh definitely has some some things that make it uh, lend itself to electric uh, power. Mm -hmm. It's also kind so, of funny. Um, uh, track and drag almost sound the same. <laughs> but. Yeah, true. That that might be a bit confusing. So, but uh, so drag racing is actually there's not really a track, right? But there's this straight line, and it's really just about the tempo. It's it's just about how fast the car accelerates and gets to a certain point, right? Yeah, D R A G <laughs> drag racing. Uh and I guess let's let should we just talk about that first since we're since we're here? Yeah. Um yeah. yeah, drag racing is is all about how fast you can get from from point A to point B. Usually it's uh some fraction of a mile, so I think the most common one is a, a quarter mile track. Um I don't know how many kilometers that is. Something quarter like quarter mile. Something like oh a half. Oh my god. <laughs> This is this is the problem of like a live conversation. Now I have to Google mile two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, I I think we I actually talked a little bit about um, drag racing in a previous episode when I was talking about the history of electric cars and uh, drag racing was was part of the history of electric cars and that it, it kind of inspired some of the early electric car designers and actually inspired Tesla to some extent. Uh, to to get into the business because it showed that electric cars could be more powerful and and, and faster, uh, but yeah, Teresa, you were mentioning to me that that that's uh, that's been true forever, right? Yeah, uh, sorry, I was kind of distracted by finding out how many kilometers a uh, quarter mile is. It is zero point four kilometers. Nice. Uh, what were you saying <laughs> um, about uh, um, if electric cars are faster? Yeah, Was you were saying that question? they've they've kind of been faster for forever. It's just that yeah, we, we so, kind of noticed recently. Yeah, yeah. So in the very early stages when vehicles were created, um, the electric car was actually faster. The electric engine was faster than the combustion engine. But since you couldn't really get that far without the battery technology, people 
stopped using electric cars and focused more on combustion engines. The electric vehicle then vanished for decades and just came back when the battery technology was more advanced. And um, yeah, and now the electric vehicles are back. Yes, so they're back. back on and, track. Um, yeah, back to DRAG, drag racing. Um, yeah, the, the, the recent incarnation of drag racing, uh, from what I can find, was like kind of came into existence around 1996 with the, the, in the U.S. at least, with the National Electric Drag Racing Association. It was basically a bunch of people who were drag racing their custom-built electric cars, and then they were like, oh, we should, we should start a club. And they did. <laughs> Um, and so it's been around for, for quite a while. Um, I think, uh, from what I could tell, it's, it's starting to, there's, so, so NEDRA, National, Elec National Electric Drag Racing Association, is separate from the main drag racing association, in, at least in the U.S., which is the, uh, I think, NHRA. I actually don't know what the, I guess it's National Hot Rod Association. I'm going to have to look that up while, <laughs> next time you're talking. Uh, okay. Why why are they different? Um they're just separate organizations. Certainly NHRA oh, okay. is is focused on gas powered uh dragsters and they do like the whole thing up to the what they call top fuel, which is the fastest of the fast dragsters where it's like do the quarter mile in I don't know, I guess four seconds or something. So um, but but who's faster now? Uh the, yeah, the electric so, motor or <clears throat> interestingly the gas is still faster on the drag strip, which to me is a little counterintuitive. Like you would think that... I thought that the acceleration is better for electric motors. Yeah, that's what I thought. I expected to find that, oh, electric could beat gas. But, I mean, it's quite possible that it can, but the technology doesn't exist yet, basically. And from what I can tell, the problem is that there isn't a big uh, industry around building the parts that you would need to make an electric dragster be able to put out as much power as um, the the top fuel dragsters do. Like you would need to build, mm -hmm. you need to custom build the whole motor, like this gigantic electric motor, and you'd have to custom build the batteries, and you'd have to custom build like speed controllers. So there's and all these not things. enough sponsors and not enough interest. Yeah, basically in not enough field. money. Yeah. yeah. Like, I think that if Elon Musk decided he wanted to build the world's fastest dragster <laughs> and take all his Tesla money into it, he probably could, but um, no one's done it yet. Uh, I did run into I did run into a, a company that is trying to, that they're, um, I think they go by the name Top EV, which is kind of like a take on Top Fuel. Uh, and they're, they're actually working on building a, a dragster that they hope to be able to go faster than the Top Fuel dragsters, but... Uh, they're, you know, it's a, it's a years long process and, and they're having to build a lot of stuff from scratch. What? So how, how much faster are the gas cars? Like by how many seconds on this quarter mile or do you know that? Um, or how, how much is there to catch up? Yeah. So I know, I know the EV dragsters are at around seven second quarter mile, which is darned fast. <laughs> but uh, let me check. Uh, the top fuel dragster quarter mile, it, it's definitely faster and like significantly faster. And the thing is that um, a little bit of time faster in these things is actually a huge difference. A like, lot, yeah. If, if they were able to do six and a half, that would be uh, a lot faster. <laughs> but it's mm -hmm. it's it's more than that. Um, let me see. For the quarter mile, it is. So part of the problem is the top fuel cars don't even go to quarter mile anymore because they would get going too fast they only go to a thousand foot <laughs> um so um significantly faster let's let's just keep it at that you're talking about over 300 miles an hour at the quarter mile um and probably in the four or five seconds range whereas with the electric dragster you're talking uh only 200 miles an hour at the quarter mile and only in the seven second range so it's it's a lot slower, but mm -hmm. there basically That's there are people who believe you can you can make it faster, and I, yeah. I believe you can. Like it, it totally makes sense. And the the electric dragsters actually do compete with the gas ones for the first little bit because they they have that enormous torque and like the, the electric motor can just start instantly. Uh, but as soon as you get past like the first few feet, 
uh, it's hard for the electric to, to continue to put out enough power to, to accelerate. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, there's some other interesting stuff. Um, there's also electric. So there's electric drag racing with cars, and there's also motorcycles. And uh, the motorcycles are similarly fast, uh, around seven seconds and, and 200 miles an hour at the quarter mile as well, which is super fast. Um, oh, and I was mentioning uh, NHRA and the, the the kind of the gas drag racing association. Um, they are also they're they're at least discussing uh, bringing electric in as part of the uh, as part of the formal like system that they have as well. So maybe in the next few years we'll see electric drag racing as a as a as a what's it called division uh, within NHRA. NHRA is National Hot Rod Association, which is a uh, yeah. Hot Rod is is kind of an expression for a type of car that you you soup up. You put you take a normal car and you put really fancy parts in it, and it makes it go faster and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's for electric drag racing. I'm I must say that I'm a, I'm a bit disappointed. <laughs> and that it's not I faster, that, yeah. I yeah, I, yeah. I thought that the electric motor would be faster, but yeah, let's let's see how the, what the future brings. Be- so the reason why I'm so disappointed, like usually I wouldn't care, but I always thought that this is the triumph of electric motors, like that they are just stronger and faster. I thought that this is the the one thing that should be very convincing for any automotive lover, and. Yeah, apparently that's that's not the case. Yet, yet at yep. least. Hopefully, the guys yeah. at at Top Fuel or sorry, Top EV can uh, can figure out a way to make it happen. Aside from me being a bit disappointed from, <laughs> from the performance of the electric motors, so how is uh, how what's the audience like? Is there an interest in electric drag racing versus or like compared to the interest in in combustion drag racing? Yeah, I think the. The answer is no. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty limited, and and that it makes sense because the the size, sorry, the uh, the speed is is lower, and the you know ninety percent of the excitement of drag racing also is the the fire coming out of the top and the explosions and and stuff. But um, yeah, for now the audience is small. I I think that once the once the, the electric drag racers get to where they're faster, like. I think it'll be exciting to see them running against, and I think that people will be will be watching. Um, yeah. But you know what? What I find more interesting about electric drag racing than combustion drag racing, I think there's just more more progress, observable progress. That's true. Happening. Yeah. Could that could that be? Yeah, you'll be that you'll be able to just see every every yeah. year. Yeah, every year there's something new, and you never know what might happen. Whereas um, I can imagine, I mean, I don't know if that's true. You're the one who did research about drag racing, but I can imagine that with the combustion drag racing, um, it's just like yeah, you, every you get, year kind of the same, you get maybe a, a like thousandth, a bit faster. A thousandth, a thousandth of a second faster. <laughs> I think that, yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a good point. I, I think you'll see that. Um, and also I think that maybe most of the important players might already be established and there's... Like maybe not many newcomers, and therefore not that many surprises. As versus in the electric drag racing, there might be like someone completely new appearing all of a sudden with a completely new technology. Yep, and it could totally and, disrupt it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that yeah, this is where the potential may lie in electric drag racing, um, targeting audiences. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Uh, speaking of like potential, basically the potential is in is in the technology, right? It's in it's in uh, advancements that you can make in order to make the make the motors more powerful and and get the energy out of the batteries faster. Uh, and so yeah, it's worth talking a little bit about the the technology that's in use now. Like I kind of alluded to it, but they're basically using mm-hmm. off the shelf parts. They, they started out like the electric drag racer started out with just having multiple motors. They just you know, you, you can imagine just taking like multiple electric car motors and hooking them all together, <laughs> and then using that to to power the thing. But you know, the more motors you have, the more uh, friction loss and and other losses you get, and you, you lose a lot of the power. Um, and but but giant motors are hard to come by. And then um, yes, yeah, so they have motors, and then they have they usually have some sort of gearbox to help uh, 
keep the motor in its perfect power range in terms of RPM or as fast as uh, as close as you can to it. They only use like two speed gearboxes, not like six speed or anything, but some some gearbox. Uh, and then they they do, of course, have power packs. Uh, the power packs. I wasn't really able to figure out exactly how big the sorry how how much capacity the power packs had, um, but. I don't understand. What is a power pack? Oh, meaning the batter, the battery pack. Oh, okay. Um, but they weigh just a just a few I, hundred pounds um, because you don't really need a, a gigantic on, battery pack. On how long, how long the track is? Yeah, but it's basically always a quarter okay. mile. So you just need enough battery. Oh, it's always a quarter mile. Okay. At least that's the. Sometimes they do eighth of a mile timing as well, but. It seems that a quarter mile or a thousand feet, which is a little less than a quarter mile, but uh, you know, same ballpark. Those are the kind of distances mm-hmm. they're going for. So the, the battery pack. The, it's big. I wonder if you didn't could actually use a supercapacitor instead of a. Yeah, battery. I was wondering that too, and I didn't see anyone doing that. Um, I think it's because the what they're like they want to keep the weight down, and I. I I don't remember actually from the supercapacitor episode, but or oh, the series that you did. Idea. But the is energy density of the supercapacitor. I don't actually think is better. It's just very good at giving it out quick, having power quickly. at yeah. an instant, right. very high. Right, and mm-hmm. in in this case, it doesn't. Se- it seems like what what they've done is they they build battery packs where they have a lot of cells in parallel, and so by having a lot of cells in parallel, you can actually get a huge amount of energy out of the pack very quickly. Um, but I can totally see supercapacitors ending up as a, as a part of of electric drag racing. Interesting. I mean, we we don't really know. Yeah. Like both of us, yeah. like neither of us <laughs> ha- has really a technical uh, background or or deeper understanding of of what storage units yeah. would be appropriate. But um, but so far, yeah. it's batteries. I, I wasn't able to find any mention of mm-hmm. supercapacitors currently in use. Um, one more question. How big is the audience for regular drag racing? So it looks like the ballpark for for NHRA, like the regular drag racing, is that uh, like each episode, like it's on TV, you know, the, the different networks carry it. Um, I think, well, based on one article I read, it, it's recently moved to Fox as the network that carries it. But they're talking about, uh, you know, half a million people to a million people sometimes watching. Which is a lot of people. Like, I, that, there's no way the electric drag that, racing not, is anywhere close to that. Yeah, yeah, that's no, the electric drag racing probably not. But it's still, it's not that big of an audience. It's if it is it only in North America, because if you think like worldwide, what is half a million people? That's really not that. Yeah, that's true. It's not a it's not a huge audience. So, are we done with drag racing now? We are indeed. <laughs> okay. Because I finally want to talk about Formula E. I know. Because I have to admit that uh, throughout my research, I became a bit of a fan of Formula E, and now I now I feel like I get it. Because um, yeah, I used to think I, I used to have a wrong perception about Formula E, and I think that many people have that many are originally many many people that are. Um, originally like Formula One fans, they are a bit disappointed of Formula E because they like they compare it and they think that it's just a cleaner version of Formula E, like a, a, form- a Formula One, yeah, uh, for, a Formula One. And um, well, the thing is, it's it's not. It's actually trying to do something completely different, and it's trying to target a completely different audience, uh, which I am now very much aware of, and this is why I got so hooked. <laughs> Formula One is how shall I describe it? I feel like this is more um, a high end kind of sport that targets as, as so that that audience is just these middle aged upper middle class white men. Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, and and, and it's a lot of like corporate and the, the big corporate audience. It is used as a network be- between the sponsors. You have important business meetings at the VIP launch and things like that. And it's also like it, it is a very expensive sport for the teams. Like, for example, the annual cost of a team is 
120 million US dollars Ooh. approximately. So you need these wealthy sponsors right. that are into that. It's just not a very accessible sport. The tickets are quite pricey and the the race also take can take up to two hours and it's usually like a three day event. It's just all in all a lot of it's not very accessible yeah. for everyone. And Formula E, on the other hand, targets like millenn- millennials that are just passionate about technology and sustainability. So it's really like targeting these young people. I think 72% of the social media followers are under 35 years old. The tickets are less expensive. The races are shorter. And um, they also tend to be in the city too, right? So it's it'll be maybe more accessible yeah. from that standpoint and more relatable because you see this you see these cars on the streets you're driving on, or you're walking yeah. on. <laughs> so yeah, and then there's another reason for why they are doing this in city centers or like within the city. They uh, want to set a statement that um, it's just not there's just no emission out of the tailpipe, right. so they can't just be within the city and have these races. And also the tra- the tracks are just um, shorter and smaller, and it's easier to have an overview. Um, what I found funny is, so you can really tell that they're targeting a younger, a younger audience. So there are these two things, like the fan boost. Oh yeah, Did you, <laughs> yeah. you learn about that yeah. in the rule book. So um, there, there's a lot of things that I want to talk about, but let's maybe start with this fan boost. So um, the there's this track, and the, for 45 minutes, the cars go along the track. Yep. And um, they have a maximum allowed capacity. Like, they all have the same battery, and they all have a maximum allowed power. Yep. And um, with the fan boost, five drivers can become or, or can have access to uh, 25 more kilowatts of power for five seconds. And um, the people in the audience vote who these five drivers are going to be. So this is um, actually quite a controversial thing because it's not about ability, but more yeah, about popularity contest. Popularity, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, yeah, and twenty five kilowatts is is like ten percent because I I read that the the total power of these cars is around two hundred and fifty kilowatts. So that twenty five kilowatts yeah. is a ten percent increase, which like is is so a ton. Thing is there- yeah, so they're allowed, so the maximum power allowed is 250, but they can only use this during the qualifying and the uh, practice rounds. And then during the race, it, it has to be limited to 200 kilowatts. Okay. And then, um, yeah, so this is the fan boost, and then there's the attack mode. Well, so it's, it's, two, it's 200, and then with the fan boost, it's two, 225. Like total, it's two twenty five at the max. Yeah. Okay. but you can also so um, you can um, also combine it with the attack mode, okay. um, which gives you another twenty five kilowatt hours when you go to a certain area, which might be a bit of a detour at first. Okay, but it's like a power um, up, like you, like you when get, you're when you're in Mario yes. Kart and you go on the side. Yeah, to... yeah, it, it reminds <laughs> me. It reminded me so much of Mario Kart. It's yeah, it's just it's it's funny. You can tell that it's kind of targeted to a younger audience yeah. and. So um, as for the technology, because we were talking um, about this prior to the preparation of this episode, like, do they exchange the battery? Like, how do they do it? And so um, there has been a change in the last season. By the way, this is the sixth season right now. So they started in 2014. And um, they had um, in the fifth season, for the first time, a new chassis and a new vehicle, the Generation 2 vehicle. And um, this had also a larger battery. But before that, they had to switch the entire car yeah. within the race. Yeah, I read that, which so is they, funny. Yeah, um, I found it very funny, but it totally makes sense. So the battery before that was something uh, 32 kilowatt hour and uh, kilowatt hours. And um, the current battery now of the Generation 2 vehicle is 54 kilowatt hours. Yeah. And, and I read that it, it weighs like around 500 pounds, which is... 200 kilograms. Yeah. So it's pretty pretty big, heavy battery. It's it's interesting. And, and it's it's cool that they can actually do the whole race with on, on a battery. Because, like, I mean, I know that when you drive an electric car hard, it uses the battery like crazy. So, I mean, 54 kilowatt hours 
500 pounds is or it's a big battery but also like that's like the same size battery as in a model three roughly right i think it's a it's around there like okay. yeah another challenge is that you never really know how how many like how how long the race is going to be you know 45 minutes but you don't know how many laps fit in these 45 minutes so it's 45 minutes plus one lap and you never know how often you can circle hmm. within these 45 minutes so that's a bit of a challenge i guess but before we go on uh yeah. like uh, there's some other tech stuff that i thought was super interesting about formula e um See, so yeah, I confirmed that the the battery it, it's roughly the same size as a Tesla, so or as a Tesla Model Three. The, the Model Three has different uh, range versions, and that like that's actually the battery pack in the lowest range version of the Model E, uh, Model Three, which is kind of cool. Um, but the I think one of the other in- interesting technological things about Formula E is that they they heavily rely on re- regen, on like mm-hmm. uh, energy recapture, so basically regenerative braking, um, and that makes a lot of sense, right? If you're racing especially in a, on a small track, you're going to be going very fast, but then you're going to want to slow down a lot. And when you slow down a lot, you can recapture all that energy and put it back in the battery. Um, Which is, by the way, the only type of recharging that's allowed throughout the race. So oh, yeah. you're not allowed to recharge externally. Oh, cool. Um, and actually, this is, I think, an interesting segue. So when I was reading about the, this side of regen, I, I got into formula one a little bit and realized that in formula one they actually use hybrid cars these days yeah yeah i forgot to mention that yeah they use hybrid cars i mean if you count them as electric cars then uh, this is an an electric car race already (laughs) right exactly and the the formula one regen i I found that was actually interesting that since 2014 they have they have the regular regen regenerative braking makes total sense They've also been doing regeneration off of the turbocharger uh, exhaust exit. What? Like it's crazy. Like the and it, it it's it's very very complicated. And apparently there's th- there is some benefit to it, but it's a little nuts. And I, I think they're it sounds like they're. What is the turbocharger exhaust? Uh, so a turbocharger generally is a a device that sits on the engine. Uh, and basically uses the exhaust gases from the engine. The you know inside an internal combustion engine, there's explosions, and those explosions, uh, you know, many many times a second, those explosions create exhaust gases that are very hot and and move very quickly. And so those hot, fast moving exhaust gases go out through the exhaust manifold and they go into the turbocharger. And the turbocharger has a has a little turbine in it, like a fan, and the exhaust gases running past that fan run this thing that the, the normal purpose of a turbocharger is then to use that spinning energy to actually compress the air going into the engine. Because the more you can compress cold air going into the engine, the more fuel you can burn in the engine. And the more fuel you can burn in the engine, the, the more power you can get. So it allows you to take a, a relatively smaller engine and just shove a bunch of uh, air into it and by shoving a bunch of air into it you can shove more fuel into it get more power out of it Mm. but that does not necessarily have to do with an electric motor though yes but it's just a feature (laughs) of the gas motor normally just a feature of the gas motor um but at different times when you're running a turbocharger you want the the little fan inside the turbocharger to run at different speeds like sometimes you actually want to slow that fan down um and sometimes you want that fan to actually suck to to actually pull exhaust out of the engine which i didn't know until i read about this but it it can be beneficial uh and what they did on the formula one cars is they actually put basically a regenerative braking system and motor on the turbocharger itself so that the turbocharger the the exhaust gases coming out of the back end of the turbocharger can be used to uh charge a little battery that then can be used to sometimes run the turbocharger so instead of the turbocharger running on exhaust gases it actually powers itself and and sucks stuff out of the engine holy moly i oh i i wonder like how much more efficiency that brings i don't know i bet bet it's like point point zero one percent yeah i mean 
I guess so. I know that I told you that um, they have expenditures of 120 million US dollars per year per team, and um, 50% of it goes into the engine. And yeah. now I know. And you can see why. why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I know. But it's you know it's cool innovation. Uh, it might it might go away with the with the new like every few years they update the car design and and they might remove that that aspect. But I think regenerative braking is, is certainly here to stay. And and it's cool to see Formula One basically moving in an electric direction by by having a uh, yeah having, having hybrids. Um, but whereas their motives are mainly just performance. Yeah. Like I, uh, even though so, um, I have to say so. Um, Formula One like really tries to be more sustainable, and they um, have a couple of projects going on where the like the buildings that they use, um, how they heat them, and, and mm. things like that sh- shall be. And they're just aiming lower emissions, or I think like even carbon neutral and carbon neutral state at some point. So maybe I don't know. I don't want to be harsh. Maybe it's not only performance, but also sustainability that's that's driving them. But I think yeah. As for the motor, um, that's interesting to see, to see how how you can make use of the whole concept of an electric motor yeah, in, in different in ways. Multiple ways. And yeah, in, yeah, and how how many different variations there are of a combination between yeah. both technologies, which is awesome. Yep. Cool. Thank you for explaining this. That's uh, I will certainly think about this, <laughs> and uh, certainly Google this after after we record this episode. <laughs> cool. Um, so I guess the the other interesting thing to do would be to compare like there are other ways to compare um, Formula One and Formula E. Did did you look at like perf- relative performance as well? Yeah. So as I said, the maximum speed is is lower for the electric car um let me just see where the numbers are so the top speed in formula one is like 350 kilometers per hour okay do we need to translate this in miles per hour (laughs) i think it's around 200 two miles per hour dear google it's 217 miles per hour okay and um but there are like there in i think in 2016 there was one uh, car that was like over measured as a, over 400 kilometers per hour but wow. um, there was like a discussion afterwards if this car follows all of the regulations and such right. yeah, I don't but but let's say 350 <laughs> yeah. and um, the the electric car's maximum speed is 280 kilometers per hour okay so but so this is why I was so surprised by you telling me that the drag racing, uh, that electric vehicles are so much slower at drag racing because it's said to be that the torque and the acceleration are just much greater for the electric race car and therefore it's even more fun to drive in a race. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it is surprising. And actually kind of uh, maybe a good segue, like uh, do you want to talk about hill climb? Yeah, okay. Because uh, like, I think hill climb, depending on the track, is a is a great example of just what you were talking about. That electric does have an advantage in um, in oh, cases then, where you but, need acceleration. Uh, I should, so, um, but one thing that I wanted to mention was like audience. Um, how oh, yeah. much? How many people? How many people are interested in Formula One versus versus Formula E? Um, because I heard many people talking about that the interest in Formula One is kind of dying. And I looked at the statistics of the TV views, and it seemed like there was a steady decline. Um, I think since two thousand and nine, the the viewers the views have been declining. But there was then a certain jump in two thousand and eighteen again, and the latest number, like from two thousand and eighteen, was like four hundred and something million people. I think four hundred and ninety people, uh, four hundred and ninety million viewers on television. And that's for versus- Formula One. That's Formula One and yeah. Formula E. I found contradicting numbers from different sources, but so the better source says 411, 411 million TV viewers, which is almost as much, almost as many viewers as the Formula One. And um, another source said 300 and something million. 
Yeah, I viewers. saw the I saw the four hundred and eleven, and I was I was like, there has to be something. Like it can't be it can't be almost as big because like you just see Formula One everywhere, and the drivers are like super famous, and then like Formula E, I've certainly yeah, heard so, of. Yeah, so no, you it, know yeah. you know what the thing is, Formula E. Um, that's the first year where they have had so many viewers, oh, and I it see. jumped up. It jumped up, I think, by seventy percent compared wow. to the last year. Like there there was a huge jump. Interesting. And um, I think it came with more and more manufacturers being interested in Formula E as well. Yeah. So um, by now, like they they have Jaguar, Audi, uh, Renault, Porsche, Porsche, BMW, Mercedes Benz, Nissan. So they have more and more teams coming up. Right now, it's eleven teams. Yeah. Yeah, the popularity is rising. Ver- Versus, like, Formula One popularity seems to kind of decline. This is why they're so close, the numbers. Gotcha. Oh, and the other thing I, I read that was interesting is that the, the first race of the Formula E season was actually uh, Friday and Saturday, yeah, like, a couple of days ago. So, of uh, the six of the Of, of, of the, the 2019-2020 season. Yeah. 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 So everyone get watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Check it out. Um, so one, th- I feel like that even the drivers are super young. I'm following them on Instagram now, and they look like they're high school students. Yeah, I think there's. I mean, uh, I also read a lot of like um, fud <laughs> around. Uh, not quite fud, but a, a lot of people saying like, "Oh, Formula E is kind of a place where drivers go if they're not good enough for Formula One." <laughs> oh really? Oh, yeah. that's harsh. <laughs> it is harsh. There are a lot of harsh people on the internet, it turns out. I, uh, yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, so what, what? So you said that hill climbing has an advantage for electric cars? Yeah, uh, so especially, so the, the premier hill climb, from what I can tell, in the world is something called Pikes Peak, uh, which is in Colorado. It's a really tall mountain, so you're, like, you start pretty high up, and then you go super high up, and it's very bendy, it's uphill. Um, it's really hard on the car and there are a few advantages that electric has in those situations. Uh, but in the end, basically right now, electric cars are, are winning the Pike Peace Hill of Climb and are setting the records. Um, and it's because electric cars don't suffer from issues with altitude. Like as you, with a gas car, the, as you go higher up, there's less and less oxygen in the air to burn. And so your car gets less and less oh. efficient. And so an electric I car doesn't see. have that. It just just goes. Um, and then it's also very windy, and, and electric cars lend themselves to windy tracks because you, you get a lot of acceleration for short short bursts. And so you get mm-hmm. you, you can uh, you can basically make it up in the make it up in the turns uh, where where you can't uh, win in straightaways. Um, so yeah, in the end, the electric cars are winning Pikes Peak, Pike, Pike's Peak, which is really exciting, um, and are also doing well in other hill climbs. But it seems like tall and windy is is where electric really shines. Oh, that's cool. Did you also uh, read about the Paris Dakar electric car? No, I didn't. In the in the Paris Dakar race, that's a, so that's a this rally, is the, right? This, this very this is this very long race. Oh, I don't know how how many kilometers, like several thousand kilometers. I think like eight thousand. Km- oh my god, that's cool. But the, uh, the Paris the car races are these very long races, and um, not that the performance of the electric car is anywhere near <laughs> of the performance of any of the of the gasoline cars. But there has been one electric car that has finished it from start to end. Wow! Yeah, this was the third attempt, though. I see. Do Do you have any idea how they how they charged like? So, I mean, the other cars have to refuel as well. So I guess they just charged overnight. Oh, I just I just see that uh, it's a 6,200-mile rally. <laughs> That's crazy. So it had six batteries, and they could be juiced up, according to this article, juiced in just up. 60 minutes. Well, um, yeah, They had, like, a, a, a special charging system. Oh, yeah, okay. And 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 the solar panel on the rooftop. Yeah, although I'm, I'm sure the it. I'm sure the solar panel on the rooftop is uh is not not no, giving not, not giving not too much. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, we'll have an interesting but... conversation about that when we talk about the the solar racers, like how how much solar panel you need to to really be effective at at mm -hmm. helping drive the car. I mean, it was I guess just a combination. Like they were just taking taking any chance to get yeah. power. Yeah. Sure. So yeah, that's uh, that's electric racing. <laughs> do we uh, do we want to like review what we um, what we talked about? Um, we uh, talked about drag racing. We talked about Formula E. Oh, th so there's actually um, a thing that I forgot to mention about Formula E because last season was the first year that they made positive earnings before taxes. Yeah. So it is like starting to pick up. Apparently. And that's probably because of all those all those additional uh, viewers you were talking about, the 70% increase there. Yeah, maybe. Oh, I hope that the 70% increase was right. <laughs> I'm not sure, but there was, a, like, even if it wasn't 70% because that sounds very dramatic right now, um, it was at least, like, a, a very high jump. Yeah. Maybe let's not nail, nail yeah. it down to 70%. Please, please don't and, quote Teresa. Um, yeah, we learned that, we learned about the disappointing performance of electric motors in drag racing, which was, yeah. <laughs> but only so far, still working on it. Yeah, they're still working on it, but there's a lot to catch up. And uh, we talked about hill climbing. Yeah, and how electric motors uh, pretty much dominate hill climbing once you get uh, a tall enough hill and, and a bendy enough road. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm very grateful that you explained to me um, the whole thing with the hybrid motor in Formula One cars. Um, that's very cool. Yeah, I was really <laughs> grateful that the, the, to find it. Like it, it's it's exciting to see that they are applying electrification in, in novel ways, even to Formula One. Well, thank you so much for listening. I hope, or we hope that you learned something new today and that you enjoyed this new format. We don't know if we're going to keep it, but if you enjoyed, let us know. At, and at this point, we also want to thank our patrons. Thank you for supporting us. We really appreciate it. I'm excited to talk about electric vehicles again next week. Are you excited too, Teo? Yes, very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. See you next week, everyone. <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs>